This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on insurance. I'm an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant and expert witness, author, and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to talk about how to read your homeowner's insurance policy. Your home is likely your most valuable asset, and a homeowner's insurance policy is an important part of protecting your home and your belongings. If you have a mortgage on your home, your lender probably required you to get an insurance policy that protects the lender's interest because it provides such broad coverage, including both property, liability, and workers' compensation coverage for household employees, most homeowners will obtain a homeowner's policy if they expect to occupy the property. Even without a mortgage, homeowner's insurance is still your best bet to protect your investment in the home and your exposure to liability. But do you even know what is in your policy? Would you know your coverage in the event of an emergency? Are you underinsured? Are you overinsured? About two thirds of American homes are underinsured, according to estimates by Nationwide Insurance. Some dwellings are underinsured by up to 60%. CoreLogic, an insurance research firm, says three out of five American homes are underinsured by an average of 20%. The homeowner should not wait until it becomes necessary to file a claim to find out whether the homeowner is insured up to the actual cash value of the home or its full replacement cost. If the homeowner before a loss determines he or she is underinsured and responsible for paying a lot of money out of pocket, the homeowner will contact the insurance agent or broker who obtained the policy on behalf of the person insured to increase the limits to an appropriate amount. Despite how important it is, many people who own homes and have homeowners of policies do not take the time to properly review the policy. To make certain that a homeowner's policy provides the coverage needed, it is necessary that the homeowner understands the basics of homeowner's insurance. The basic job of a homeowner's policy is to indemnify the insured if the home or its personal property are damaged from certain perils such as wind, hail, fire, and theft. It also offers liability protections which protect the insured's assets from liability claims, medical expenses, and other damages if people are injured on the insured's property or as a result of the insured's conduct anywhere. Most common types of homeowner's policies that uh, you own will usually dictate the coverage type that is to provide it. The homeowner's policies start with the HO2, which is a basic name peril policy, meaning only specific perils are covered, such as fire, lightning, windstorm, and hail. The HO3 is the most common policy type and offers a wide range of coverage. This is an exclusion policy, which means that all perils are covered except those specifically called out in the policy. Common exclusions would be earthquakes, flood, mudslide, nuclear accidents, terrorism acts, acts of war, and sinkholes. Personal property 
under an HO3 is usually only protected against the same name perils as covered by an HO2. An HO4 policy is more commonly known as a renter's insurance policy, and it covers all of the owner's personal property in an apartment or rented house. It also offers liability protection in the event someone is injured in the in your apartment. To read and understand your insurance policy, it is first necessary to review the declarations page. While the majority of insurers use fairly standard forms published by the Insurance Services Office to compile their homeowner's policies, there can be and usually are differences. Each policy will spell out certain things that are covered and others that are excluded, but they can vary from company to company. The forms can vary, but in most cases the layout of the policy is fairly consistent. The declarations page, probably one of the most important parts of any insurance policy, should be reviewed carefully. It summarizes your coverages, as well as your personal and home information. Information included on the declarations page include, one, the policy number, two, the policy period. That's the period of time that the policy will cover you against certain risks of loss to your property, three, the name and address of the policy owner, four, the address of the insured premises, five, the name of the mortgagee, usually your mortgage company, six, coverage types and policy limits that would apply to your policy, seven, the deductible amount for the policy, if any, eight, home rating information, nine, discounts received, ten, the premium amount, and eleven, a listing of forms attached to the declarations page and endorsements. It is essential that the person insured working alone or with the assistance of his or her insurance agent, insurance broker, or risk manager reads and understands the policy so that it and the declarations page you are reviewing shows that you have obtained the coverages that you sought. You must then do an overview of the property coverage. When it comes to homeowner's coverage, the homeowner needs enough insurance in the event that it is needed to cover the cost of the following after a loss. 1. Rebuilding the structure of the home and appurtenant structures. 2. Replacing the personal property. 3. Paying for the cost of additional living expenses if the insured needs to live somewhere else while the home is being repaired or rebuilt. And 4. Covering the cost of personal liability claims. Section 1 of the coverage covers the dwelling. And it is not the building that it is that is insured. It is you, the person insured, who is covered against the risk of loss of that dwelling. A homeowner's policy is broken into two parts. Section 1 details the property coverage, and Section 2 describes the liability coverages afforded by the policy. When it comes to the structure of the home, the homeowner should carry enough insurance limits to cover the cost of demolishing the damaged portion of the dwelling and sufficient limits to allow rebuilding the home. Never consider the amount of the mortgage or market value of the home as an indication of the limits needed. A large part of the market value of a home is the land on which it is constructed. The land is not capable of being damaged by an insured peril under a basic homeowner's policy, nor will it be burned or otherwise lost. Unless there is a landslide or a mud flow, 
which of course would be excluded in any event. An insurance policy limit should deal only with the structures involved. An insurance agent or broker can help you determine the appropriate amount of coverage levels in your area. Some insurers also will send an appraiser to your home to determine if it is adequately insured to its value or to its replacement cost. Some agents or brokers will do a quick calculation as follows by taking the total square footage of your home multiplied by a local per foot building cost, approximate coverage amount for Full replacement costs would result from the multiplier. These quick calculation methods are fraught with danger because they're merely guesses relating to a common, usual in the area, home and may not have any relationship to the home that is sought to be insured. More accurate local costs can be obtained by contacting a real estate agent, a building association, or a local fire and reconstruction license contractor. Remember, as policies renew, local costs can change exponentially, and the limits chosen should be reviewed annually without relying on an insurer's automatic change in limits. Also, add in the cost of any upgrades the insured may have made or any unique materials used uh, that would cost more than the average to replicate. Then you should deal with coverage B, personal property. In most cases, personal property coverage is a percentage of the building policy limits. This is a rule of thumb that should probably be avoided if you know the types and values of the property in your home. To protect against underinsurance, it is reasonable for the insurer to do a detailed home inventory to determine if the use of a percentage of the building coverage will be sufficient. High-value properties such as jewelry, art, guns, antiques, and coin collections are usually limited by the policy to small amounts unless the policy adds a personal articles floater endorsement to specifically insure the various expensive items. In addition, if requested, the insurer will allow greater limits for high-value property for an additional premium. To obtain a PAF, it will be necessary to obtain a professional appraisal of each item setting the retail replacement value of the item of jewelry, fur, or antique. Section 1 also provides a coverage C for loss of use. This component of a homeowner's policy will pay for additional costs that you incur when it is necessary to live away from your home due to damage from a covered peril. The coverage will pay for the necessary difference, difference in living expenses required to maintain the homeowner's current standard of living. It will not pay for all expenses incurred after a loss, only the difference between normal expenditures and actual expenditures. For example, if the homeowner normally spends $1,000 for groceries every month and dining each month out, but the actual costs incurred after loss causes the grocery and dining out bills to increase to $1,400, the insurance will pay the additional $400. This coverage will vary by insurer but most policies offer at least 10% of the home coverage with additional coverage available for an additional policy premium. Other coverages that might be found included losses insured, a listing of those specific types of losses 
that the policy insures against and losses not insured, which section should be reviewed in detail and, uh, and where the insured should ask questions of the agent or broker if the insured doesn't understand something excluded. Common exclusions include those caused by mold, fungus, flooding, earth movement, earthquake, terrorism, acts of war, and the nuclear hazard. In addition, the policy provides coverage for personal liability, which should be reviewed in detail by you. This video was adapted from my book, The Homeowner's Insurance Policy, which is available as a Kindle book and as a paperback from Amazon.com. And the chapter, chapter 5, on reviewing and reading the insurance policy is quite extensive and has only been covered in small part by this video. If you found the video to be useful or interesting to your colleagues, please refer it to a colleague. It's free. And please subscribe to my Rumble channel, my YouTube channel, and my blog so that you can be advised of future blog posts and future videos. Thank you for your attention.